Okay, let's get started. And if anyone comes in late, then they come in late. So welcome to What to Do When Diets, Trainers, and Quick Fixes Don't Work. You all know me. My name is Michelle Vaughn. And um, I have created this program for yo-yo dieters because I've been in the health and fitness industry for over 30 years. And I'm really disturbed at how many people get caught in that vicious cycle of gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, and it doesn't have to happen. Uh, but first, let's go over some housekeeping. I have everybody muted. I'm recording the screen, but that's just the slideshow. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, then just please feel free to uh, type them into the chat. And then at the end, I'll open it up for questions. All right, sound good? Perfect. All right, so I am going to share with you the fat storage trap and how to break free of it, how to have happy hormones, live powerfully and permanently. So most women that I've come into contact with through um, teaching and training, they ask me all the time, how can I get control of my body? How can I get control of my weight? What kind of diet should I go on? And the problem is the vicious cycle of yo-yo dieting is absolutely the worst thing that we can do. And I got caught into it and I will share that with you in a minute about what happened to me and, and how I broke free of it. But what I want to tell you is that the regular solutions, standard solutions don't work. Uh, the diet industry is a billion dollar industry. The health and fitness industry is a multi-million dollar industry. And they love to get us all caught up in that because if we lost weight and stayed lean and toned, then they wouldn't be able to make any money, would they? Right? And then we have our food industry who... Just the other day, I found out that there are only three corporations that own all of the food production in the United States, but that's a whole nother subject we'll get on at another time. But what the point I'm trying to make is that we get caught up in this. We get caught up in the culture of skinny. We get caught up in marketing, media, our portions are completely out of control. And then the food industry has added sugar to every single item that we purchase. Uh, and if we're not cautious, you're gonna be eating sugar all day long. So what I'm aiming to do is stopping the frustration, self-consciousness, stress, depression, and weight gain. And I'm gonna show you how to get lasting results. So I don't need to ask because I know that most of us have felt self-conscious about our bodies, how other people perceive us. Have we ever felt overweight, stressed out about it? Just adding one more thing on top of everything else that we have to deal with, work, family life, um, stress, lack of sleep, hormones. And we don't need to have that insecurity popped on top of it. And then did you know that nine out of 10 women who lose weight gain it back? And most women have gone on more than five diets in their lifetime and they've gained weight back. So I have lost kind of all the diets I've been on in my life. Um, you know, I used to be a professional dancer, so we had to stay really thin. And I've done Pritikins, Atkins, Herbalife, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, The Zone, South Beach Diet, The Grapefruit Diet, Raw Foods Diet, The Vogue Diet, which was my favorite, The Whole Food 30, Slim Fast, South Beach, Mediterranean, Vegan, Intermittent Fasting. I've done them all. And then when I would gain the weight back and more, my self-confidence and self-esteem would just nose, nosedive, making me feel so hopeless and depressed. And I had no idea that the standard solutions didn't work. I thought it was me. I thought I wasn't doing the diet right. 
And then the depression would set in and bleed into all the other areas of my life, feel, making me feel like I was a complete failure. So that's why these standard solutions don't work. They don't pr uh, produce lasting results because diets are based on deprivation, not sustainability. And when we're emotional eaters, which most of us are, and then we go on a diet, the first time we run into a stressful situation and we're feeling deprived, we immediately go off the diet, then feel terrible about ourselves, throw in the towel, and then create a whole nother fat storage loop. And then the craziness continues, right? And then to compound it, some of us will jump right to the next exercise fad, beating ourselves up, which creates more cortisol, uh, which adds to that fat storage trap. So the only, the, all of these solutions just perpetuate that vicious cycle of weight loss and weight gain, and we never get to escape. Yo-yo dieting can be very addictive. I know a lot of people that are literally addicted to dieting. And like I said earlier, they prey on us. They prey on women not having the ability to keep the weight off because then we'll jump right back into another diet plan and then they reap the financial benefits. That's what makes them a billion dollar industry. And I was the ideal customer for the diet industry. So the reason I'm here is I'm going to tell you my story. I was constantly chasing that perfect body. In my family, fat was not acceptable. And I was a chubby little girl and I was constantly harassed nonstop by my father because I didn't have the perfect dancer's body. And my father would put his arm around me just to see if he could pull the love handles away. And then he would make comments to everybody who was present about how I needed to lose weight. This is the one main reason that I was constantly chasing that perfect body and the perfect diet because I lacked confidence most of my life. I didn't like mirrors. I hated dressing rooms and I was constantly consumed with feelings of hopelessness. And no lack, no self-esteem. I had big dreams, no confidence and a constant reminder from my dad that I had to achieve the perfect body to be loved. It's really sad. The one person that should have loved me unconditionally destroyed my sense of self-worth, lovability, and chances of success until I reached a certain weight. So my father, there he is, did that to me. And that's how I got started on the fat storage loop. Nothing worked until I went against the grain. And I don't know if it's happened to you, but I would lose the weight, congratulate myself. I'd feel fantastic for a month or two. I'd get confident in my clothes. I'd have energy. I slept well. I wasn't afraid to go to the beach or the pool. I'd go out with my friends and then slowly but surely it would come back on because I would let myself cheat. And then it became a regular thing, right? You start cheating and then all of a sudden the old eating habits come back. So finally, I had had enough. I searched out the right coach and the right programs and learned the science behind weight loss. Then I eventually became a professional in the health and fitness industry. And that helped me change my mindset about who I was, change my habits around food and exercise and taught me to deal with the daily stressors in a healthy ways, not stuffing myself with food to calm my nerves or to bury the pain until I went against the grain and cracked that code. So if you don't know what the fat storage trap is, here it is. So it starts with chronic dieting, eating foods high in sugar, then running out and trying to do CrossFit type of exercise, running a marathon, which causes that cortisol dumping. And then other hormones, which I'll get into later. 
and then right back around and around. So when we have a history of yo-yo dieting, constantly eating processed foods full of sugar, living a stressful life, which creates cortisol dumping, then go on these crazy exercise programs, all of this causes inflammation and insulin. Cortisol and insulin work together in our bodies. And when cortisol concentrations increase, our body becomes insulin resistant. When our bodies become insulin resistant, the glucose, which is the sugar, which is in our bloodstream, it isn't used for energy. It immediately gets stored as fat. When this happens, this is the road to type two diabetes. And if you're a woman that tends to gain weight around the middle, you're in a much higher category to get to gain become type two diabetic, to have heart disease, high blood pressure, you know, it's the, the apple versus the pear. And so, especially women that tend to gain weight around their middle, um, I always warn you guys to be really careful. And then on top of it, high levels of cortisol affect our metabolism. It causes fatigue, depression, reduced memory, and bad concentration. Then we have our mental loop, which starts with guilt, trying to be busy, lack of time, mindless eating, brainwashing, and anchoring. And that adds all of it. So if the mental loop is the guilt, not having spending enough time with our significant other, our children, not working out, not spending time with our friends, trying to volunteer at school or work, wanting to advance in our careers. And then we, so we just spread ourselves too thin. And then we fail miserably at all of it, causing that whole mental loop and more stress and more cortisol dumping. So I am one in 10 who have kept the weight off. And that's the good news. And that's why I'm here because I believe that I discovered how to stop this insanity. And I'm not like the diet industry. I don't want to coach you forever. I want you to learn the things that changed my life for good. And never come back to me because you won't need to. I believe that no woman needs to keep struggling with this any longer than she wants to. And I say any longer than she wants to because... It is a conscious choice to get healthy, confident, and fit. Nothing changes until we change. We can point our fingers at everybody and everything, but it really all lands back on us. Many of my clients have learned this solution from me. Uh, Cynthia came to me about 13 years ago. She's a corporate VP. Her three children had gone off to college and beyond, and she was finally ready to focus on herself, and she hasn't stopped since. She lost 30 pounds. She couldn't do a push-up, didn't sleep well, didn't have energy to ski or hike or do the things she wanted to, and now she travels, works out, can do more than 10 push-ups, holds a plank for more than 60 seconds, and sleep soundly. She travels regularly with her husband and she doesn't stress about gaining all the weight back because she's learned the solution. And her focus is on mindfulness. Judy started working out with me 12 years ago and she's been working out ever since. She did not have a weight problem, but she couldn't sleep and hormones were getting, were interfering. Now she eats really healthy. Her hormones are in control. She has a new grandson who she takes care of five days a week, and she has tons of energy to run around after him. Tessa came to me nine years ago, different Tessa. Uh, she was regularly active, but she had a lot of inflammation in her body. She had lots of aches and pains as well as muscle weakness. She'd feel anxiety at night. She was going through a horrible divorce. And then she would snack after dinner. She tried every diet under the sun and would always go back to the same old habits. 
So we worked on her anxiety first because our thoughts and feelings are where most of us go astray. That's the beginning. And she was able to change all of that. And she no longer eats from emotions. She feels happy, healthy, and sane. So any one of you could be next. Feeling true self-esteem, being having energy, able to focus at work, devote time to your partner and children, engage in fully in your friendships and social life, wear your favorite clothes with confidence, have strong, healthy joints, not obsess about food, feel comfortable in your own skin, tight muscles, flat abs, and never have to worry about another diet again. Well, the permanent wellness fix is for extraordinary women who want to live extraordinary lives. If this is you, then you're in the right place. And it may not be you, but it may be, you may know somebody, a family or a friend uh, that needs something like this. And I'm going to demystify how you can break the fat storage trap and all the insanity leveraging my system. So most of us are emotional eaters in the eating cycle that leads to fad, starvation, and unsustainable diets. What happens to us is we're upset, why not eat? We're in love, why not eat? We're stressed out, why not eat? We're at a party, why not eat? We're anxious, why not eat? You're bored, why not eat? Your partner did something to annoy you, why not eat? Your boss passed you up for a promotion, why not eat? All of these things, we're all pretty much guilty of. I know I certainly am, but I can teach you how to break these bad habits once and for all and replace them with healthy habits. Then you'll be breaking that fat, fat storage trap and stop the emotional eating once and for all. So most yo-yo dieters, like I just said, have an unhealthy relationship with food. And I'm going to teach you how to repair your relationship for food once and for all. You don't have to give up your favorite things. I eat chocolate every single night. It's the restrictions that cause the food cravings. And we can hold out for a while, but eventually stress or something else will trigger us to give in to those cravings. And then we usually go overboard because we're feeling deprived. So it's much better to learn how to eat small amounts of our favorite food. I don't even like to use the word diet. It's a food plan because just that word diet means deprivation. So sugar, I'm sure all of you know that sugar is more addicting than cocaine. And that's why our food those corporations have stuck it in every single item that we eat. But I want to say, if you're going to, if you're wanting a quick fix, um, I'm not the right person for you because you're going to get caught right back into the fat storage trap and more cortisol dumping, and then that whole leapt and let down. So these quick fixes don't work. But now you know. Now you know you have the knowledge of what's happening inside of your body, and now you know why it doesn't work. Stress, lack of sleep, crazy workouts all cause the fat storage trap and the cortisol dump. So let's go on to the sugar addiction. So just the other day, I was reading an article about how the former Arkansas governor, Mike Huckabee, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and his physician told him he had only 10 more years to live, which brought his world crashing down. And that's when he got serious about his sugar addiction. He wrote in this article that much of the sugars consumed today are hidden in processed foods that are not usually seen as sweets. For example, one tablespoon of ketchup contains about four grams of sugar. A single can of sugar sweetened soda contains about 40 grams of sugar. Right there, it's too much sugar for us to consume. It starts, the glycogen gets stored as fat, the leptin backfires. So leptin is a hormone that it comes it's supposed to tell us when we're full, but when we have, it's, it's secreted from fat cells. 
when we have too many fat cells, we have all this leptin secreted and it ends up backfiring on us. And it tells us that we have, we're not satiated yet. And so then we keep eating. I know I've had days where I eat and nothing satisfies me. And I keep eating, trying to find whatever it is going to satisfy me. Well, there, there's your leptin right there. So when you stop that sugar addiction, you're going to have more energy. You're going to lose weight. You're going to sleep better and you're going to be able to concentrate longer. So you can finally break this cycle and lay down a healthy foundation to break free from all these old habits. And then this isn't true for a lot of people, but some people, when they gain weight, they jump right into the next exercise fad. And I think about CrossFit and HIIT. And that actually does more damage to your body than good because you're putting too much stress on the body. So too much cortisol is being produced. And then that whole glycogen thing gets stored as fat and you're wondering what is going on. Here I am working out really hard and I'm gaining weight. So with the permanent wellness fix, I don't include punishing workouts. We will build a workout that's sustainable, personal to you, to your body, and to your lifestyle. It's not a one size fits all. I don't believe in breaking your body. I believe in starting with a strong foundation, finding something that you enjoy so you get those endorphin high and And it's personalized just to you. I don't stick every, I don't tell everybody to do the same thing because it doesn't work. If you don't enjoy your workout, you're not going to do it. So number four, the cortisol dump is when stress, the silent fat accumulator and metabolism start to give start to backfire on all of us. And I said a couple of slides ago, when we live a stressful life, it creates the cortisol. Then we go on these fad diets, which creates inflammation in our body. Then we do crazy workouts and cortisol, insulin, and leptin all come crashing down. When cortisol concentrations increase in our bodies, then they become insulin resistant. When our bodies become insulin resistant, the glucose isn't used for energy, it's stored as fat. So high levels of cortisol can affect metabolism, cause fatigue, depression, and reduced memory and concentration. One of the things that we will do in the permanent wellness fix is we're going to learn to respect our bodies. And I'm going to create an easy to follow stress reduction program that you can implement anywhere at any time. It's not some woo woo thing that we have to go to an ashram in India sort of thing. It's a very doable plan to reduce the production of cortisol in your body on a daily basis. So you'll immediately notice a difference in how you handle your day-to-day -day stress. Most people don't think about their hormones. I didn't think about hormones. I had no idea that it had anything to do with weight gain and weight loss, but hormones have a tremendous effect on weight loss and weight gain, and especially with women. Um, and I talked about leptin, leptin secreted in our fat cells to signal the brain we're full. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work when we have too many fat cells. When we have too many fat cells, it backfires on us. It doesn't tell our brains that we've had enough. In fact, it tells us the opposite, and it tells us that we need to eat more. And then hence we become a prisoner in our own body. I'm going to recommend hormone testing uh, so you can find out exactly where you are. So we'll build some happy hormones. That will create, uh, that will help to actually build up your metabolism. All right, so when we create a plan to balance the hormones in our body naturally, and I'm not saying we have to do HRT, there's lots of ways to balance hormones naturally. Um, 
Because when we work on fixing the external things like eating and exercise, it doesn't always work. We have to learn to control the emotional ups and downs that cause the stress and the emotional eating. And sometimes it, that can have, it, that can be created from um, a hormone imbalance. So I don't use cookie cutter programs. I develop very personalized plans that suits you and your needs, fits into your family and work schedule, and it's gonna leave you energized, not exhausted. The correct exercise program will increase your metabolism so you burn calories all day long. With the Permanent Wellness Fix, you get a comprehensive plan tailored specifically to you, to your lifestyle, your work schedule, your family life, values, and goals. Again, it is not a one-size-fits-all. So I don't, I'm not going to mince words here. Change takes time. It takes effort. It takes consistency. It takes intention, sweat, being a little uncomfortable, and overcoming setbacks. But it's worth every ounce of it because this will be the last time you will ever have to feel less than, uncomfortable in your own skin, fat, ugly, worthless, useless, depressed, sad, and miserable. Those are all the things that I felt. Because this program is going to change you from the inside out. You're going to gain a new perspective in every area of your life. And you're going to gain all the tools that you'll ever need to continue on this path forever. No repeating this program. It's one and done. And I developed this program because I don't want women to have to waste their time, energy, money, feeling lost or hopeless like I did on all the quick fixes. Because together we come up with a personalized plan for you to live powerfully, confidently, reinvigorate your work and sex life. That's you, Teresa. And to get your hormones back in balance. Okay, so this is why I would like to invite you to explore the possibility of the permanent wellness fix. Uh, And if that's what you want to achieve this year, then let me show you how. So the first thing we do is we lay a strong foundation. Do you remember a couple of years ago when that high rise came crashing down in Miami that was on the beach killing several people? Well, they found out that that foundation was subpar. The cement had cracks in it. And that's not going to happen with my program because we're going to build a solid foundation and no one is going to come crashing to the ground because building a solid foundation together will set you up for success. Because solid foundations, we build lifelong coping skills and strategies. You will learn the habit swap. We're going to build happy hormones, train your mindset for success and learn what the miracle of movement is, not horrible exercise programs. Step two, we build your happy hormones in healthy ways to minimize stress, stay focused on important tasks, and to boost your metabolism. Because as we age, our hormones can be the reason we overeat, we get restless, irritable, discontent, and it isn't all related to estrogen or progesterone. There are other hormones involved, like I just said. And most of the time, these are on a slow, subtle decline that we aren't even aware of that's taking place in our body. We'll develop a personalized nutrition plan that again suits you and your body, your metabolism, and your lifestyle. We'll have your hormones evaluated and we're gonna build a program to stop that cortisol dumping, to reverse the resistance to insulin and to boost your calorie burn 24 hours a day. So remember when I said doing punishing workouts causes a spike in cortisol, which in turn produces inflammation and turns glucose into fat by storing it instead of by using it? Well, those types of workouts stop here. I'll build you a personalized workout program that fits your lifestyle, time constraints, 
and including travel. And we start slow with sustainable exercises. Then, as I said, this is not a one size fits all because we're all unique with our own work, relationship, body and mindset challenges. And I'll craft a personalized program specific to your hiccups. We'll work together on your vision, mindset, habits, nutrition, exercise, and productivity. I didn't really go in a lot to the adrenaline and productivity, but we will go into that. You're going to know yourself better. You know yourself better than anybody else. And I'll, I never tell anybody what to do. We are going to work together to achieve this program so that you're going to have confidence, success, and live the best life possible. So like I said, we're going to build a strong foundation. We're going to repair your relationship with food, develop an exercise routine that pushes and propels you boost your hormones, to boost your biology, and then we will follow a strategic plan specifically tailored to you. So wishing is for Disney and movies. It's not for real life. I used to wish for everything, sort of like Christmas, but all year long. And then I wouldn't take the necessary steps to or find the right help to get me where I wanted to go. And nothing changed because waiting, wanting, hoping, wishing are fantasies. But in real life, I learned how to take action to create change. And it was up to me. I had to do it because I didn't want to stay stuck and miserable. And I was really ready at that time to jump in with both feet to start a new life and get a new body. And do you know that 90% of all people that go on diets gain it back? It's the same percent of nine out of 10 women that go on a diet, they gain it back. And 95% of all people that set New Year's resolutions go right back to their old ways before the end of January. So the, the permanent wellness fix is not going to let that happen. We are above average women and we're we're going to take all of it on and learn how the habit swap is how we start to change our behavior once and for all. And you'll become so aware of your thoughts and feelings and what causes your triggers that even if you do get triggered, you're going to have the tools to know how not to engage in the old behavior. So Harvard Studies show that support is the key success. Supportive relationships help you live happier and healthier lives. So it will be really important that we look into all your relationships and make sure that they're on board with you, that they give you the support that you need because I have several personal training clients who have struggled with weight loss and their husbands come home every single week with a whole box from the bakery and they've had to sit down and have a real heart to heart with them and say, I need you on board. This is important. If you want me to live 10 years longer, then I need you to support me. And I wanna say that the other thing that's really important about all of this yo-yo dieting cycling, it is really bad for our health. And what happens is people, have they sustain long term effects from yo yo dieting and carrying around too much weight? And then they find out when it's too late, or they decide to do something about it when it's too late. And I don't want any of you to do that. I want you to be able to live well into your 90s, be able to be happy, active. If you have grandchildren and grandchildren, then to be able to. Um, participate in their lives or travel or whatever it is that, whatever that strokes you. I want you to be able to do that. And, and we spend more money on ridiculous things than we do on our health. And then it becomes too late. It's past the point of no return. And that's one other reason that I developed this program is because too many people in the United States were at 65% have type two diabetes. And the latest research was that we were close to 80% obesity rates, 
we don't have to worry about Putin because we're just going to all die from being overweight. Okay, so do you want to be a statistic or a success story? Well, I want you to be a success story. Uh, I want you to be able to live the life that you deserve and share all your talents with the world, to walk around in a lean, confident body and never have to worry about lack of sleep, haywire hormones, uh, or the next binge that you're going to go on. You'll also show your family, children, friends, and coworkers that you have grit, tenacity, and perseverance to finally shine in all your glory, no matter what life throws at you. And you will be a positive example for your children and grandchildren to teach them to live happy, healthy lives and not, they won't get caught up in this whole fat storage trap. So we're at the end. If you would like to set up a call, I'll send you the link in the chat. If you know anyone, family, friend, coworker that could benefit from this, then please feel free. You're gonna get an email with the link to the um, video and you can just go ahead and forward that video right onto them. And I'll have this video posted if you, have to, if you wanna watch it. If you forgot something that I said, or you wanted to go over something, it will be available for the next three days. All right, so just to recap, I lay a strong foundation. We build happy hormones. You get a no diet nutrition plan, tailored exercise plan, and a strategic personalized roadmap to endless growth and confidence. So the impermanent wellness fix, it includes support and strategy calls and guidance. You get a time crunch workout library, self-care scorecard, mindfulness and mood evaluator. You get a roadmap, sleep tracker, commitment journal. You belong to a private community of like-minded women. And then there is a portal and videos that take you through all the exercises. Uh, and then we meet once a week on Zoom. Does, now I am going to stop sharing. And does anybody have any questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you have any questions. Um, no questions, but this was great. I just want to make a comment. Thank you. First of all, you're radiating. I mean, you're just like so healthy. Um, so <laughs> you are your own best ad. And thanks for sharing your story. I, you know, I told a different story about you. My story about you was that you've always been thin and healthy and it was effortless. So, wow. No, <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, um, because I've done so many yo-yo diets in my life, I have to be extremely careful because I can gain weight in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Yeah. I didn't. I also didn't include that when I was professionally dancing, I was bulimic. I was bulimic for many years. Mm -hmm. Not uncommon. Yeah. Well, and I think now that I'm in full menopause, I'm like, what the heck? You know, I'm I'm doing what I've always done, and I'm not getting what I always got. So. Um, and the pandemic, I've heard it from time and time again from people. It's like, I, they feel like they didn't do anything different, but they added 20 pounds. And it's so true. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, there's got to be studies about that one day, I think. Yes, there will be. And well, one of the, I mean, right away, there doesn't have to be a study. Because we were in lockdown, we didn't move. You know, we maybe moved from the living room to the kitchen and back again. <laughs> um, and that's, I want to bring that piece up I didn't include that in the presentation you know people say as we get older oh our metabolism slows down no that's not what happens what happens is we slow down so then we burn less calories we have less muscle mass on us yeah 
So then we burn less calories and that's actually what's happening. If we keep moving and you've seen, everybody's seen stories about people in their eighties, you know, that Jack Elaine. Jack Elaine. And then there's an 82 year old bodybuilder woman who's unbelievable. Yeah. And when I say muscle, people get this thing. Oh, you're going to be like, no, no, you just need muscle on your body. Instead of you need, you need to change. You need to change. This is body fat and this is muscle, right? <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? That's body fat. One pound. That's one pound of body fat. So what we need to do is get rid of the body fat and put muscle on. And that in and of itself will increase the metabolism right there. You know, you don't have to lift 300 pounds, you know, as, as soon as you start exercising with weights or any kind of resistance training, then you're going to gain muscle. And stress, you know, stress, I know a couple of people that have shared with me um, after dinner, you know, after dinner, the anxiety sets in or boredom sets in, and then they, you know, they have their favorite go-to snacks. Anybody else? Yeah, Michelle, can I ask you about, um, I know probably for like 40 years, I was on a restrictive diet and um, hadn't realized, you know, I probably never ate more than 1200 calories a day. And then all of a sudden I retired, stopped moving, started eating like my grandkids and gained now 150 pounds. So, um, so so I, I feel like, uh, you know, how that you could really help me a lot because um, my body has been in stress in, in starvation mode for so long that, that any small deviation, I just gain, uh, you know, I, uh, well, and I'm a retired ICU nurse. So I had years of high stress and cortisol, high cortisol. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I think I'm your poster child for everything you shouldn't do. Um, well, you're not alone, Maureen. You're not yeah, alone. Yeah. And, you know, Oprah comes to mind because how many years was she on those liquid diets? For years, I did Herbalife. For years, I drank those drinks. And if anyone knows, does this, um, this, our set point comes from caveman days, like way mm -hmm. back. And what happens is when we restrict our food intake, our metabolism automatically shuts down because back then they didn't know when they were going to kill their next lion or bear or buffalo or whatever they ate. And so it was a survival mechanism. Well, now we have food everywhere. We don't have to leave our couch. Many people who tried the test, only four of them could tell. <laughs> really? um, so when we go on these restrictive diets, not only have all that hormone stuff, but our metabolism shuts right down, right down. And then that's why we start gaining weight again. And then from restricting, I go to binging because I've restricted for so long right. that I need to get back to balance okay. before I can even, I think, I don't know, you know, I'll have to talk to you about it. Yeah. And, and then our portions, we, I didn't go into the whole, cause that's a whole nother subject, the food industry portion control. Our portions are so out of control that we all, myself included, um, you know, think that a normal meal is this big when in fact, protein should be the size of your fist. Your carbohydrates should be the size of your other fist and the fat should be the size of your thumb. And when I look at that on the plate, it's like, oh my God, I'm just so brainwashed. You know, and we all are. We go out to these restaurants and they serve these humongous proportions. And I was just writing a new uh, ebook. Do you know that most restaurant meals are on the average 800 calories more than if we cooked our meals at home? 800. 
So you should go in a cheesecake factory and then. <laughs> oh yeah, a cheesecake factory is probably five thousand more calories. <laughs> um, but you know, and when I go out, I have a whole travel section on the food and exercise. When I go out, I have an appetizer and a salad instead of a whole meal. And that's how I, I prevent myself, control myself from, you know, overeating. And then the other thing that happens a lot of times is uh, I'll tell my clients, right when you sit down at the dining, you know, at, at a restaurant, before you have your first glass of wine, before, before, not after, before, you tell the waiter to take away the chips or you take away the bread because as soon as you have that first glass of wine all your control goes right out the window because alcohol you know takes our inhibitions away and then the other one of my other favorite ones is and I'm going to give you guys this challenge put your fork down between each bite for the next week Because it takes the brain, the stomach, 20 minutes to tell the brain that it's full. Try it. It's really hard. <laughs> I've been trying, I've been practicing it for years. It's really hard. Really hard. But try it. It's a it's a really good challenge. See if you can, and then what happened, and of course, take your phones off the table and all, you know, we all know that mindfulness. Not that we do, I, I don't, but um. If you put your fork down, then you actually smell and taste the food and you might enjoy the person's company that you're with. Oh, what about that? <laughs> right? You know, the whole, the screen time is a, uh, our technology is a whole nother thing, but, um, but the reason when I was studying over the years, there's not one program that puts it all together, right? There's the meditation over here and then there's the hormone doctor over here and then there's the personal trainer and then there's, you know, all the Weight Watchers and Noon and Jumpstart MD and all, all those programs. So they're all separate. They're not all put together looking at it from one perspective because we're whole people right? We're not segmented into all these little compartments and we have to take it all into account to make it work and to make it stick and to make, to change a habit. And I don't know if you, I'm sure most of you, you're all intelligent people know about the neuroplasticity of the brain. The way I look at habits is how a river is coming down or you know, a rain, there's a stream coming down the mountain and one little tributary comes off to the side. Well, that's the new habit. And the more the water comes down and it digs deeper into the soil, that new habit, instead of going right, you're gonna automatically go left, but you have to keep practicing it, right? Over and over. And then the brain will accept it as, oh, wait, this is what I'm supposed to do, not the other thing. And it it's been proven that's how habits are changed. Some people say 28 days, some people say 30, I say six months, it takes a good six months to change a habit for good. Right? One step mm -hmm. at a time. I think that um, there's a book called Atomic Habits and, and he ag agrees with that, that it's six of, months, yeah. six months for a new habit. Yeah, he's one of my favorite. I have all the books on habits and he's James Clear. Yeah, he's, it's great. Mm -hmm. yep. well, this has been wonderful. I love the concept of um, accountability too, because left to my own devices, I'm like, oh, that won't make a difference. Oh, that, you know, I'm like, oh, it makes a difference. You know, well, my, I, my yeah. yeah. I was talking about that in class today that, you know, our brain is an amazing thing, but we have, they're called cognitive distortions, both positive and negative. We can tell ourselves, oh yeah, I'm no good. I can never do that. 
I'm too old, I'm too this, I don't know, like, and it's not based in reality. But on the other hand, we also can say to our trainer, which I hear all the time, I don't need anything. It's like, well, you have to be eating something because you're overweight. And we keep telling, you know, we have these cognitive distortions that we keep telling ourselves. Um, and it's not good or bad. I'm not judging. It just is the way human nature is. And then I'll say to my client, okay, so if I followed you around for the next 30 days, if I moved in with you, I guarantee you, you will lose weight because I promise that you're eating something, right? But we have this ability to trick ourselves and say, I haven't eaten anything because you know, it's like three M&Ms here or a bite of donut there or, you know. Well, I, so I, that's I, why I, accountability is important. I, I actually was um, probably three months ago. I said to my daughter, you know, I'm trying to lose weight and it's just not working. And she's like, but are you trying? <laughs> my girl. <laughs> Trying, you right. know, it's, I probably said it over a bottle of over a bowl of ice cream. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to get it in there. So Michelle, yes. so like, like these, I don't like water. So I drink a lot of um, sparkling waters or Perrier, plain Perrier. And then I got kind of hooked on these spin drifts. And then looking at them, you know, it's like, and I'm a type two diabetic. So if I have um, seven of them, that's my carbs for the day, you know, or close to my, or almost my carbs for the day. How much sugar is in them? It, it's different for the different ones, but there's like, uh, the carbohydrates, I can't see it right now. There's like eight calories. The carbohydrates are. So let's are, are only like two grams, but if, you know, like if I, but I drink, I can drink I can drink like 12 of them in a day. So there's two grams of carbs. So if per, per serving. So if I have, that's one of my meals for carbohydrates because I'm supposed to with my type two, which I probably need to go lower. I'm only supposed to have 60 carbs in a day per my uh, uh, endocrinologist for my, uh, but I think that, you know, one, the carb counts high. But I have to tell you that I am a uh, restrictive binge eater. So for the most part, you know, I'll eat a fistful of protein and a fistful of salad for each meal. And that's what I'll eat. So it's not like I'm, but then I drink, I drink, maybe I'll drink six in the morning, maybe six at night. And okay, so, so I mean, they're like hidden sugars. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what Huckabee, Huckabee was saying. And let's talk about empty calories. Like there's calories, you know, calories aren't really, you know, everyone says calories are calories, calories aren't. No, it's not true because you're saying that you're getting your daily allotment of carbohydrates and it's been, that's empty carbohydrates. It would be better to eat fresh fruit, whole grains, fruits and vegetables, for several reasons. One, they're nutrient dense and they're full of fiber. So they're going to fill you up. They help with dige digestion. And I think that's pr probably one of the uh, not so great things that the Weight Watchers have done with the these, you know, how many units of carbs everybody needs. Uh, because it teaches people to, oh, I can, you know, I can replace really healthy nutrient dense carbohydrates with these units in the drink, which really what would be better for you, Maureen, is if you drank two of those a day and then got your daily allotment of carbohydrates from whole grains, fruits and vegetables, and you would feel better. Yeah, the, it's not that, I mean, because they are, it, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's um, like I went to a, they, my dietitian, my, I went to a dietitian with, from my um, endocrinologist. And so when I talked to her, you know, she, she was clearly, she looked anorexic. And, and so of course I already started a judgment before I even got there. And then 
the diet that that she and I worked at, I said, you know, this is my restrictive diet that I've done for for 40 years. I said, so all this is going to do is make me binge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, no, you need to follow what I I say if you want to lose weight. And I said, well, I I don't know that I want to I want to achieve balance and health. Mm -hmm. I said, I would like to lose weight. I'm not going to lie about that. I would love to lose a lot of weight, but I need to find health and balance first. Mm -hmm. And this isn't going to help me do that. Mm -hmm. And she told me I was crazy. (laughs) So I was like, yeah, I don't think this is going to work. But, you know, I I ask a fat person, I can tell you any diet. Uh I can tell you any diet and I can talk you through it. No worries. But I need to find balance before I need to, I need to, I don't know. I'll talk to you about it. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Well, the diet industry, just remember, and the food industry are billion dollar industries, right? Billion dollar industries. Michelle? Yeah? Can you give us some you know, overview on how you would balance hormones naturally? Well, it- I, I'm not a doctor. I, I, there's a functional medicine person that I would send you to. And there's lots of, um, you know, you can get your hormones balanced through uh, supplements. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Michelle, if I do work with you, then like, what's the, you know, what's the program like? I mean, do we meet, like you said, you mentioned we meet once a week uh, through Zoom. Once a week. And then there's a portal, like 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 an online college, you know, course that you would go through all the different exercises we would work on. You know, it depends on what you need, but I'd set you up on a nutrition plan, an exercise plan, you know, because you work full time, we'd work on your productivity, stress, mindfulness, sleep. Some people don't have any issues with sleep. Some people have terrible issues with sleep and lack of sleep is a, that's, that actually in and of itself causes weight gain. And we get confused and then we're tired in the morning. So we grab all the wrong foods. Um, yeah, so sleep's another big one. And the horm- if you have a hormone imbalance, that can cause that sleep deprivation. So we'll meet once a week and then you will set the program. And then you would have, yeah, specific things that you need to do on the portal, watch the videos, and then we meet again. And you feel there's a lot, you fill out lots of, um, there's lots of homework. Oh, I see, I see, I see. That's that's where you get to know yourself and where you learn, oh, I do that. You just be, you you start to become aware of what you're doing and when you're doing it and maybe why you're doing it. Then you become aware of maybe some of that, that, internal dialogue that goes on in your head that half the time we don't even realize that it's happening you know these old tapes you know my father's stuff is still inside me i don't like people putting their arm around my waist i literally i jump we'll make sure we don't do that (laughs) (laughs) yeah Oh, so michelle i mean thank you for this really outstanding powerpoint presentation and your delivery was just perfect. It was powerful, but it was so natural at the same time. I mean, I, I paid attention to every second that you said Good. you were talking. Good. I'm not a real <laughs> fan of PowerPoints, actually. I hate them. But, <laughs> but visuals are good for a lot of people. And when you actually, when you include two of the senses, um, we tend to remember more. The more senses we include when we're trying to learn something, it, the better. So it is good to hear and and watch a PowerPoint. Yeah, on. and then I'm, I was able to also click and take a photo of some of the pages. Yeah, right, well, and it's, it will be up. You can, you know, you'll have access to it, so you can take as many screenshots as you want. So you were talking about control, 
and mindfulness. And uh, I, I just expert learned, at that. Yeah, I just learned uh, recently that, well, you know what they say about um, control or self-discipline? It's like a bank account, right? Oh. We draw from it in the morning and then by nighttime, you know, or even before that, it's running low. And that's why you sometimes you hear about stories with outstanding members of society, you know, doing something uncharacteristic. I mean, and it usually happens at night, you know, or in the evening when they've run out of their um, yeah. uh, self-discipline bank account. Yeah. And so, and then also you have people who meditate. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is I found out that I, I do throughout the day from morning on, I do everything that I, the way I generally, that's, that makes sense. A good, I exercise good discipline, et cetera. And then by evening, I guess I didn't know this, but I was thinking, well, I've done all that. I deserve to just relax and just do whatever I want to do. And then the consciousness start. And the next thing I know, I, I know hours of t I've been watching hours of TV. I've been sitting on the sofa for many, many hours. My eyes are exposed to the blue screen. And then I'm snacking. And this happens unconsciously for a few nights a week. And then the next thing I know is I've got this blubber. <laughs> What happened here? You know, it was never the case with me where, I mean, I was skinny for a long, long time. College friends tried to fatten me up. I was fine in my 30, 40, even after I had my child, I was always skinny. But that's, so then I figured out, you know, from, from more mindfulness that, if, that it's mindfulness is a 24 seven thing. You know, you have people who meditate and they separate the, the, meditation session from the rest of their life or their exercise session from the rest of their life when actually the idea of something larger like movement is throughout the day and the evening you know and so now I realized that I oh that's what I was doing I wasn't mindful after say dinner and then it's like anything goes and so what I did what I do that's really good for me from the time I wake up up until after dinner I more than undo well, in fact, I harm myself by doing all these things. And then, of course, you know, if I don't brush my teeth before I go to bed and I have undigested food, then you're talking about dental issues. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? What have I done? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's the mindfulness, though, that helped me realize that. that. That's just one of the issues I'm dealing with. Though. There are other things, you know, but I thought I'd share that about control. Thank you. You brought up a good point about comp the compounding. I actually call the compounding effect. There's a book about it. And each time, you know, it's like a savings account. Every time you do the new habit, it compounds, right? And so uh -huh. it just keeps uh -huh. building on the, that original. And that a compounding effect is huge. It can go the other way too, yes. you know? Yeah. Right. That's yeah. Huh. yeah. Anybody else? All right, great. Well, I'm going to send all of you a free ebook um, for joining the presentation tonight. And thank you. In the email, there'll be a link if you do want to just you know chat with me and see if this is the right. It may not be the right fit, but um, we can chat about it and see if it is the right fit for you. And if it is, then how we'll approach it. Sound good? Sounds great. Thank you, Michelle. Great. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.